Welcome to The Joy of Music. Featuring as hostess, Diane Big, the First Lady of the Organ. Praise ye the Lord. Praise Him in His sanctuary. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Diane Bish. Welcome to the Joy of Music. We have an especially exquisite program for you today. My special guest is Joy Brown Wiener, the concert master of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra and a wonderful musician and a wonderful friend and committed Christian. I would like to open the program by playing on the great 117 rank organ here at the Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church in Fort Lauderdale, a very interesting number by an early Italian composer, Gerolamo Frescobaldi. This is the introduction and toccata. It starts out slowly, but then it really takes off.
My special guest today on The Joy of Music is a wonderful friend and a fantastic musician, Joy Brown Wiener. She is the concertmaster of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra. Of the many compositions she plays, one of the most exquisite is by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. She's going to be playing that for us now. It is the Rondo for Violin and Keyboard Instrument. Thank you. 
It's a really great pleasure for me today on The Joy of Music to welcome a friend and a wonderful musician, Joy Wiener. Joy, welcome to The Joy of Music. It's a pleasure to be here. You have a wonderful name for this program, oh, Joy. I, I think you and I both share a lovely name. That's right. I, <laughs> my middle name is Joy. Yes, I know. Joy, you're the concert master of the Memphis Symphony, aren't you? That's, That's right. a real honor. Well, I think so. How long have you been the concert master there? 32 years. <laughs> you're not even that old. Oh, thank you, love. <laughs> <laughs> well, our conductor, Vincent DeFranc, has always teased me about, oh, he tells the kids in the audience, he said, oh, she started when she was three. Yeah, you know, sure. he'll, he'll try to make it sound better. <laughs> but was, was it a whole symphony orchestra then? No, we started with just a 21-piece chamber orchestra. Uh -huh. And then he very carefully built it from that number, not, not wanting to add people who couldn't carry their load. And you have stayed as the concert master all these years. Yes, I, I've been very lucky, Diane, because... In marrying Russell, I would have found living in Memphis without that orchestra, I, I would have been restless, and I would have said, Russell, let me travel, let me concertize oh, like sure. I was. But this way, I could stay at home and see something grow that I'm very proud of our symphony because we, we really have a very fine regional orchestra. Mm -hmm. Now, can you say exactly what your responsibilities are as a concert master? Yes, you bow and you uh, prepare the scores you for mean, you, the You sections. mean you make bowings, markings for the, the markings. bowings. You mark the bowings. And just as you have in a singing in a hymn, you have four-part harmony, and mm -hmm. your theme is sung by the soprano. Well, that's, that's what the violin is doing, and as the s strings are the basis of the orchestra. I mean, not to say anything about brass and woodwinds, but we are the core of the orchestra. Sure. So in that regard, we sort of carry musically what's happening. And it's up to the concertmaster to really interpret the music just as the conductor indicates he wants it. So you're not only leading your section, you're trying to get the interpretation of the music from the conductor and import that to your section. And then they, in turn, you know, right. it all works together as one. Now, I know your faith in God means a lot to you. And what does it mean in your music as a musician, in the orchestra, or just in your life in general? Well, you know, it's interesting, Diane, almost because we're doing this program today, it, it takes me back a number of years. And I, I want everyone to think that I'm 39. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure going to be another Jack Of course, of course. <laughs> but truthfully, when I remember very well when I was 10 years old, I had a Sunday school teacher. Who, met, who inspired me so with Albert Schweitzer mm -hmm. that I thought not only, I knew at that time I wanted to be a musician, but then I decided this is what I want to do. I want to be a missionary as well mm -hmm. as a musician. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, you get a little caught up in living in New York and Europe and concertizing, and you may tend, you don't forget it, but let's mm -hmm. face it, you know, maybe it's not always that burning desire, but then, I don't know, it's, it's been very exciting because my faith was very much increased. I, I've always had that, so I'm not one of these that had to look for it and search for it. But I do know that in a Bible study that I have had an opportunity to, to be in the Bible study fellowship, you may have heard of it because it's mm -hmm. very well known, sure. and that has really stirred my interest in knowing the scriptures from mm -hmm. beginning to end. I mean, I find it very exciting. I, you know, I can see that exuberance <laughs> in you, <laughs> and that's you. wonderful. I think that in Memphis you just played an arrangement that I did of Fair Lord, Ferris Lord Jesus, didn't you? That's, that's right. I'd like to do that today on the program, if you'd do it with me. Oh, that's an honor. Well, I would be privileged to do it. Let's just do that now. All right. <clears throat>
Joe, you play with such wonderful tone quality, and I know, of course, it takes a master to play the violin, but I also know that you have a wonderful violin. You oh, want to tell us about it? May I, please? Sure. I, it is one of the really beautiful strads, I think, that uh, is around today. Many people ask me, by the way, how many strads are there? And they have cataloged between four and 500 now. Mm -hmm. He made more than that, but that's how many. But I have had this instrument for a little over 20 years. It was a gift, a surprise gift from my husband, Russell. Oh, that's wonderful. So really, it's, it's a thrill to have something like this, and it just becomes a part of you. If I were a violinist, that would probably be the best gift that I could get. I'm sure you feel the same way. Oh, I told Russell, you know, what else can you give me? I mean, this, this I live with day to day. Oh, sure. So. How old is the Stradivarius? It's about 250 years old. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Is it the wood in the instrument that makes it so great? I think, well, yes. I know that's part of it. And the way that they seasoned the woods uh -huh. at that time when they were making their instruments, that had something to do with it. But I think they feel that the varnish is the, the key. And, of course, they let the secret die with them. Those Italian masters did. So they really had a difficult time to try and reproduce that. But we are having makers now that are making efforts at that. Well, I know you play a lot of the concertos, and one of my favorite is the Mendelssohn Mine Violin too. Concerto. Oh, I love it. And you play it so well. When did you first play that? I'm sure, let's see, nine or ten years old. Is was, that right? Mm -hmm. Mendelssohn is one of my favorite composers. You know, he, he studied the St. Matthew Passion of Bach, and he... The, the life of Bach and the faith of Bach and also Martin Luther were such an important part of Mendelssohn's life and his music is full of, of such emotion. He was a very spiritual man. Well, I think you should play the last movement of that concerto. Let's do it. This is Joy Wiener playing the last movement of the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto.